going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Today's video is about a little known game called The Witcher 3. Well, The Witcher, not the third game. The third Witcher was actually the first one I ever played. I own the other two on PC, but I'm really not a PC gamer, so I'm going to stay away from those until I guess a remaster comes to the console of my choosing. The Witcher has been something that's captivated gamers for years now. Uh, my older brother Joe recently, and I mean recently, today is September 12th, and my older brother just recently, I'd say in the last two weeks, picked up The Witcher 3 for the first time. I think he bought it a while back, but he was going through his back catalog uh, meticulously, and he told me he had this game maybe six, seven months ago, and I told him, I said, Joe, you need to play this game. It's really, really amazing, and it, you're missing out on one of the most uh, meaningful gaming experiences of your life. And Joe's 40 years old. He's, you know, we're old school guys. You know, we still think, you know, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is like the best game ever made. Which, if it if it isn't, my name ain't Beastly Gamer because it still is. But I got a text from my brother uh, last week, and he texted in all caps: "The Witcher 3 is the greatest game I've ever played." So, the game. It does captivate its audience. It does ensnare you in the lore. You learn to love and hate the characters. And I think it's just the way that CD Projekt Red developed it and, and nurtured it and created this living, breathing environment that you really feel a connection to is a testament to the power of the production over it. CD Projekt Red and I will forever be thankful for what they've done here because they've set a benchmark for other developers uh, and many many developers will try for years and years from now to reach that standard of The Witcher 3 and many will fail. Now there's been rumblings of The Witcher TV show coming to Netflix and um, I've been kind of on the fence about this because I'm the kind of person that when I, when I play a video game and then when I see that video game transferred over into television, it, it it kind of tarnishes my image of the game. Say, for instance, um, they were to create uh, an Uncharted film, which, of course, has been talked about for years. Whoever this person who plays Nathan Drake is, if they don't live up to it, if they don't remind me of him, it'll tarnish the legacy of the game. It'll, it'll become part of the lore and it'll become a part of that world and it'll change it. Case in point, Angelina Jolie does not strike me as Tomb Raider, and neither does, does this new chick who played the, the recent Tomb Raider film. She does not remind me of Laura Croft from the game, maybe by voice, but when you look at her, to me, she doesn't even resemble uh, Laura Croft from the latest games, from the new trilogy. So when I see that film, it makes me feel like it's an, a person pretending to be a, a game or a character that I care about and it takes me out of the experience. I was actually pleasantly surprised to find out recently that Henry Cavill, the man who plays Superman in the new DC films, is cast as Geralt in the new Witcher Netflix series. And uh, some people did some mock-ups of him on Twitter with the white beard and hair, and I was like, well, he could actually pull it off. This guy's really buff and muscular. Uh, I don't know if he'll be able to pull off the accent, but he definitely could get the look. And so as long as he has a look, he can work on everything else because the visual is what you see, is what you get first. Before anything else, you see a character and if they can bridge that gap between the game and, and the film or the series, you feel like, okay, this is that world. I can believe this. And so that was news that came out a few days ago that Henry Cavill was going to be Geralt. And I was very excited about it. In fact, I tweeted uh, to family and friends to let, to let them know. My brother one of, he was one of the people I sent this to, and he was really excited about it. Now, come this morning, I'm driving to work, and I hear news that one of the pivotal characters in the Witcher series is being cast by a person that looks nothing like the character in the game or in the Witcher books. Siri is a very pivotal character in the Witcher series, especially in The Witcher 3. And she's a child and she grows up during the, that portion of the game. And she's in the game quite a bit. And she has a very particular look. And so I was really pleased to see that the studio uh, working with Netflix to develop this series took so much care to try to get an actor who could pull off the Geralt look. 
Unfortunately, that's not the case with Siri. Siri is a European young lady with white hair, tall, and she has striking European features. And that's just who Siri is. Apparently, the producers and the directors and these people who are developing this series have decided to look for an African American, a black person, or an Asian person to play Siri. And I think if I was a white person making this video, I'd be called a racist immediately. This is not going to go well with the uh, audience, the, the people who have nurtured and love this this game and this lore i'm a fan of this series i love the witcher i love the world i love the characters if you decide to just to be a social justice warrior to change siri into a black person even though there were no black people in this particular in the story in that part of the world at all you're going to break the immersion of the experience we all know what Siri is. We all know who she is, what she looks like. If you were to import another person just for a political agenda to say, ha we got our status quo. We got our token black or our token minority. No borders. If that's what you think is going to work, you are going to sabotage this pro project and I probably won't even watch it. There's nothing wrong with developing a product and a project based on the vision of the creator okay i don't want to see a black captain kirk that's not who he is i don't want to see a white blade that's not who he is okay there's no need to do gender swapping or ethnicity swapping to soothe a base of people everything is not supposed to be inverted and turned and twisted upside down for equality. Gerald happens to be a white person. Siri happens to be a white person. This is a world where, or a part of the world where only white people inhabit. I don't want to see, and I'm a black man talking to you now, I don't want to see a black Siri. That's not who Siri is. I didn't want to see an all-female Ghostbusters. That's not, it's not what it is. And to me, it's a, a social justice warrior agenda. This uh, we want to uh, represent everyone type of mentality drives me fucking crazy. I think it's the wrong thing to do. I don't want to see, you know, a, a, a gay He-Man figure. That's not who he is. If, the, if the, the writers of this show want to represent something that is not authentic and that is not true to the Witcher brand, they need to just write their own project. Don't take a project that people have grown to love with characters that have become meaningful to people and flip them upside down for a social justice warrior agenda. It's not the right thing to do. And I know these aren't real characters, so it really doesn't matter. But to the fans, it does. Ask Kathleen Kennedy. You know, if you got these people who come to a project, one that has been uh, treated well and loved by its fans for years and then you decide that none of that matters that you have the final say and you can treat the project or the product however you want it's going to backfire kathleen kennedy came out with the force is female no the hell it's not the force is the force sorry if you think there's something wrong with male jedi and you want to make the protagonist female that's fine but at least she didn't turn Luke Skywalker into a black man with an afro. That's not who he was. But you see how that backfires too. People are tired of the politics. I, I'll i watch Fox News or CNN or, you know, I'll watch a political channel if I want my politics. I don't want politics in my TV shows unless it's House of Cards. I don't want politics in my video games. I want my video games, my TV shows, and the parts of the life that are supposed to be enjoyable to be without the politics and without virtue signaling and without, you know, we have to appeal to this base because X, Y, and Z. If you want to create a product that's your own, that's totally fine. But to, to deface something that already exists and it has existed for years and millions of fans have paid money and, and experienced and have 
given weight to and time out of their life experiencing and really appreciate. Some people have tattoos of Gerald and uh, Siri on their body. This is going to fail. Ask Solo. You know, when you when you take uh, Lando Calrissian and turn him into a pansexual, people don't like that shit because he was never that before. Kathleen Kennedy decided that the fans didn't matter and she didn't respect the lore. So she decided she was going to do what she wanted to do for social justice and for equality. I say that in quotes and completely uproot something that people have nur nurtured and loved for decades. And it didn't work out too well for her. Now her employment is in jeopardy. There's nothing wrong with things being the way that they are. I'm a black guy. I don't want to see black people only on TV. I don't want to see white people only on TV, but I want to see what has existed stay the way it is. You don't take an existing product or an existing property and uproot it and turn it inside out just to be a social justice warrior. It'll, it will not work. It'll backfire and it'll make this show a flop. Henry Cavill was an excellent choice, but to take other characters that people care about and that have been important parts of the lore and, and change that and pretend like the history of this, this product doesn't matter is huge disrespect to the fans. And uh, I, for one, if they change this, I'll be very upset and I'll be pretty excited to see how well this goes over with the hardcore fans because in fact, this is being made for the fans. People who play this game and who have read these Witcher books are gonna be the ones who are going to be excited about a Witcher TV series. And if you go into that TV series and see the characters that have had real weight and meaning to you in your life, and you know you spent hundreds of hours playing these games with these characters, and you see that one of them or two of them are being completely turned into something else, it's going to piss you off and rub you the wrong way. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. The Witcher, Netflix. Does it need to stay the same? Uh, are you happy to see them turning this stuff upside down? Who would you like to see twisted in a future installment on Netflix? Let me know in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the commentary, please give a thumbs up to show some support for the channel. If you guys are new, consider subscribing. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.